This is a video that I have wanted to make for a really, really long time now. And the reason why I haven't is because this video is purely personal preference, what I like the best. And generally, that and YouTube don't really go that well together. In this video, we are going to be ranking all of the Call of Duty games from worst to best, only looking at their multiplayer. So campaign, co-op, zombies are not going to be included in this decision making. And the reason why I've been so worried is because what we're going to be doing is looking at the Call of Duty games, starting at Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare and going all the way up to Black Ops 4. Reason being, I haven't played Call of Duty 2 or 3 before, so that makes it very difficult for me to talk about them. So starting at Call of Duty 4, all the way to Black Ops 4, we have 12 Call of Duty games to rank. And the odds that you you would have the exact same list that I would have are 1 in 479,000,600. Yep, that is the odds that we are going to have the same list. I know it sounds astronomical, but that's just the way odds work out. And because of that, chances are there's going to be something on this list that you disagree with. So like I said before, this does come down to personal opinion. If you do disagree with me, feel free to let me know what your rankings are down in the comments below. And as always, before you hit that dislike button when I say the worst Call of Duty game, just remember that it is my opinion. Oh, one more thing before we dive into the video, I just wanted to let you know that later today at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be live streaming over on Twitch. It's been a while since I've live streamed, but I'm hopping into it just in time for the alpha of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Um, and what we're going to be doing today in honor of this video is we are going to be starting with Call of Duty 4 and playing every single Call of Duty game all the way into Black Ops 4. So if you want to check out that live stream, first link down in the description, and hopefully I see you there around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But without further ado, we have a lot to talk about today, so let's dive in and start off with, in my opinion, the worst Call of Duty game. So coming in at number 12, aka the worst Call of Duty game, we have Call of Duty Ghost. And originally when I made this list, Call of Duty Ghost wasn't even in the bottom three Call of Duty games. But upon going back and getting gameplay for all of these games and re-remembering the game, then this one fell at the bottom place. And the main reason for that is this is the only Call of Duty game on this list that I didn't enjoy going back and playing, which I found really, really interesting. And it came down to a couple of main reasons. First of all, out of any of the Call of Duty games we look at today, Call of Duty Ghost has the fastest time to kill by a long shot. All of the guns are really good and do a lot of damage. And on top of that, you just don't have a lot of health, which generally speaking means the first person to shoot a bullet is going to win in the gunfight no matter what. Now there are some odd circumstances where that doesn't happen, but for the most part what this leads to is people sitting in corners waiting for people to run through doorways. On top of that, a ton of the maps in this game are just way too big, and because of that it creates incredibly slow gameplay because people are sitting there waiting for people to walk through doors. Not to mention one of the most annoying pieces of equipment ever in a Call of Duty game exists in this game as the IED. You walk through a doorway, it blows up, you're dead, there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. And just as an example of what I'm talking about here, just check out these kill cams from just one game that I played trying to get gameplay. So hopefully you can see what I mean by camping, IEDs, thermal scopes, and that incredibly fast time to kill now. But the one thing I will say is not everything was terrible in Call of Duty Ghost. One thing that was a huge redeeming factor is they actually had really, really good DLC maps, borderline the best a Call of Duty game has ever had, implementing new things like care packages you could pick up and become things like Michael Myers. Really cool DLC, but a lot of it was overshadowed by that super, super campy gameplay. Coming up next at the second worst Call of Duty game, this one might be a surprise to a lot of you, but this is Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Now, the crazy part about this game is that I truly believe it had the potential to be one of the best Call of Duty games of all time, for sure in the top five. But because of a lack of support and the extent that they went to with microtransactions, this game just went down the tubes. There are certain things I love in this game, certain gameplay mechanics like manual healing. I actually like 
like the 150 health of the way a lot of the guns work but once again with that lack of support certain guns got super overpowered with specific attachments especially high caliber and then they implemented new weapons that you could only get through reserves that were by far the best weapons in the game like the s6 stingray it was very clear that they were more worried about selling dollars and dollars worth of microtransactions than making their game good after launch there was two months at the beginning of this game's life cycle where i thoroughly enjoyed it but because of that lack of support and because of that focus on microtransactions it just fell down the tubes now over the next couple of months i will have a full review of black ops 4 coming out but as you can very clearly tell by what i'm saying here i am not impressed now this next one was very very difficult for me because this game was a lot of fun to play but man did it have problems and that game that i'm talking about is call of duty advanced warfare this was sledgehammer games first iteration of call of duty that they worked on alone and as far as this game went it was fun it was a lot of fun and very different than any other call of duty game we played before however there were a lot of problems first of all starting off this was the first call of duty game with advanced movement non boots on the ground and i think the way that they did it is by far the worst out of any of the advanced movement games i like to call it the pogo stick movement because that's exactly what it fe felt like you jumped up in the air and you went flying like you had springs in your shoes it made a very fast gameplay but at the same time it was very frustrating at times on top of that this was the first call of duty game to implement supply drops and simply for that fact we're gonna take off points for this this game had also one of the more egregious forms of supply drops where basically everything that you got out of it was a stat changing weapon for example one of the weapons that to this day i still don't have after being master prestige is the hbra3 insanity stat wise this is technically the best weapon in the game and i still don't have it not to mention the weapon balance was just straight up bad in this game it was overwhelmed by the bal 27 in the asm1 on top of that both of those weapons had elite versions of them that were simply better and what it came down to is if you were lucky enough to get them out of supply drops and of course that's very frustrating like i said this game was a lot of fun and i think part of the reason for that is because it was so different than other call of duty games almost like a breath of fresh air but at the same time rating it as a call of duty game it's just not one of my favorites now this next one was a tough one for me because i don't think it's a bad call of duty game in fact on this list this is where i think the cod games actually start to get pretty good and hard to rate but as far as this game goes it's just a matter of being in the wrong place at the wrong time and this game that i'm speaking of of course is call of duty infinite warfare you see the problem with infinite warfare wasn't that it was a bad game poorly balanced poorly managed that's not the case it's that it was a worse version of a game that came out a year before it just wasn't as good as black ops 3 but it was nearly identical to it and people were already burnt out on that 3d movement people were already sick of black ops 3 so for a worse version of black ops 3 to come out a year later of course people weren't going to like it and behind the scenes people have talked about many reasons why this may have been apparently infinite warfare was a very different game through development and then they had to scramble to put together a game at the very end and that game just so happened to be very similar to black ops 3 so of course people were mad at it but they did make up for it in many ways with free dlc free dlc weapons and, and supply drop system that's probably one of the best we've seen to date like i said i don't think this is a bad game it's just a matter of the wrong place at the wrong time and believe it or not i believe that this is not the only call of duty game ever that suffered this same fate for this we have to go way back to the next call of duty game we're going to look at call of duty world at war Call of Duty World at War is held near and dear to my heart. It is the first Call of Duty game I have ever played, and instantly I fell in love. I got addicted to becoming better, raising that kill-death ratio, and I absolutely love this game. But you can't look at World at War without acknowledging the fact that it's nearly identical to Call of Duty 4. Once again, taking the 3, 5, and 7 kill streaks that aren't quite as good as the ones from Call of Duty 4, taking the similar create a class model, similar perks, similar attachments, and just putting it into the World War II setting. And to me, that just wasn't quite as good as Call of Duty 4. 
On top of that, this game probably has one of the most overpowered weapons of all time, that being the MP40. This weapon was basically better than every other weapon in the game without using stopping power, and therefore you could use Juggernaut and just have more health than everyone. Probably one of the most unbalanced weapons of all time in Call of Duty. But like I said, there is a spot in my heart for this game that will always be there. It was my first Call of Duty game. I absolutely loved it. But I think it just wasn't quite as good as Call of Duty 4. And speaking of which, the next game on this list is Call of Duty 4. Now, I think a lot of people hold this game super high in their mind because it was their first Call of Duty game. Kind of like what I did with World at War. However, you have to compare this game to the games that are currently out there. This was your super basic bare bones Call of Duty game. Yes, it was a huge step forward from Call of Duty 2 and 3, adding in creative class, final kill cams, kill streaks, and all of these things that are just standard in present day Call of Duties. And that's why it's the landmark Call of Duty game, the game that everyone thinks of when people say Call of Duty. And because of that, it is high on the list, but I definitely think that the rest of the games we're going to talk about throughout this video are games that basically took this formula that Call of Duty 4 laid out and went and improvised and built on it and became better Call of Duty games because of Call of Duty 4. That being said, though, I love this freaking game. After this, in my opinion, we have the most interesting game on this list, Call of Duty World War II. And the reason why I say that this is the most interesting game on the list, first of all, it's Sledgehammer's second Call of Duty game, but is because technically looking at this game, there wasn't really anything wrong with it. The only real complaint I can have with this game is I didn't love the Division's create a class system that they implemented. Other than that, the weapons were fairly well balanced. On top of that, the maps were decent, the game was fun, war mode was a good innovation. But when I look back at this game, all I can think of is it was boring. No real reason for it, and in fact, when this game ended, I kind of made a review on it, and that's exactly what I said. Technically, nothing wrong with this game, but for some reason, I just find it boring compared to other Call of Duty games. If I sit down with a different Call of Duty game, whether it be Black Ops 2 or Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, I can sit down for hours upon hours and play those games. But with this game, for some reason, after that hour and a half of fun I have, I just go, huh, I'm done with this. There's just no motivation for me to keep playing that game. And it's a very odd feeling for a Call of Duty game I know there's technically nothing wrong with. And even the way that they handled supply drops, DLC weapons, and gear in this game, I, I kind of liked. It wasn't perfect by any means, but it wasn't bad like Black Ops 4 is. So like I said... It's odd, there is nothing I can really put my finger on in this game that I really don't like. And that's kind of why I put this game right at the middle of the list, is because there's really nothing wrong with it, but at the same time, there's nothing that makes it stand out from anything else. Now speaking of standing out, this is a game that I think a lot of you may disagree with me putting so high on the list, but for me, this is Black Ops 3. This game is a game that I think by far did advanced movement or non-boots on the ground the best. I think it's a very fluent movement system. You can move through the maps very well. And on top of that, I like the way the guns feel and the way the game actually plays. What they focused on in this game is making relatively small maps for a basically arcadey shooter. Now, I know not everyone loves specialist characters, but out of any game that did specialist characters, I believe that Black Ops 3 did them best. And on top of that, adding innovations like hero gear for specialist characters, adding reasons for you to actually play the game, grind out your levels, complete challenges, and just have fun doing it, Black Ops 3 nailed that. The one problem I have with this game is a problem that I've talked about with many games we've already brought up, and it's the microtransactions and supply drops. This game might be number two or number three on this list if it was not for the damn supply drops. The fact that I played the game the amount that I did with this game and still am missing guns like the XMC that are some of the best weapons in the game is just frustrating. I truly believe that to make a Call of Duty game the best it can be, there should be no reason for you to have to pay extra money for not just weapons, but some of the best weapons in the game. On top of that, when you look at the DLC for this game, it has some of my favorite maps of all time, one of them being Berserk. So even with those DLC maps, I think Black Ops 3 knocked it out of the park. And like I said, if it wasn't for those microtransactions, 
this game would have nailed it. This next one I think might ruffle a couple people's feathers that I didn't put it at number one, but to me, it's just not the number one on the list. That is, of course, Modern Warfare 3. Now, I do think that this is a great Call of Duty game and has many really good innovations, including the support and specialist kill streak bundles. On top of that, this is the first ever game where they implemented point streaks instead of kill streaks. So I think they did a lot of things right in Modern Warfare 3. But to me, it just wasn't as fun as the top three games that are coming up next. It's something I can't really put my finger on and don't really have an answer to, but for some reason the fun factor in this game, if you will, just didn't quite ring top three games for me. That being said, I still think it's an awesome Call of Duty game. Now moving on to the top three games, and coming in at number three is one that might surprise a lot of people, but is Black Ops 1. Black Ops 1 is a game that I think was completely underrated when it came out, and I think did so many things right. Most of the maps in this game I really enjoy. I think the gameplay works really, really well. At the time, there were a couple of overpowered weapons like the AK-74U, but they did go ahead and nerf them listening to the community, which I really like. The only really two downsides to this game is I think the kill streaks weren't really as strong as its predecessor, Modern Warfare 2, which a lot of people didn't like. And on top of that, kill streaks didn't stack like they did in Modern Warfare 2, and a lot of people didn't like that. Since then, we've kind of come accustomed to that with score streaks, but at the time, a lot of people weren't a fan. The other thing that a lot of people didn't like was the way create a class actually worked. It was based off of earning COD points through gameplay and then buying individual weapons, attachments, perks, and so on. A lot of people didn't like it, but once you played the game a bunch, it didn't really matter. You could just unlock everything. One other thing that I think they knocked out of the park with this game was wager matches. You could literally bet your COD points that you earned against other players in wager matches, and if you won, you earned COD points, and if you lost, you lost all of your Call of Duty points. This was a huge factor that a lot of people really liked in this game, and... Personally, another reason why I really enjoyed this game is this was the first Call of Duty game I was actually really good at. This was the first Call of Duty game where I could somewhat easily run flawless free-for-alls, I could really hold my own, and had over a two-kill-death ratio. Essentially, this is the first Call of Duty game I didn't suck at. Next at number two is the game that I think probably should be the number one Call of Duty game, but to me, it's not. For two reasons. First of all, Black Ops 2 came out at a very weird time for me. This was kind of the year in high school where I realized girls existed and that boobs were fun, and that if I focused on my time on girls instead of Call of Duty, they might let me touch them. So because of that, I just didn't have as much time played in Black Ops 2 as I probably should have. That being said, I still played it a lot. The thing with this game is it's another one of those games that just really didn't do anything wrong and had the fun factor there to a huge extent. League play in this game knocked it out of the park. I, for the most part, the weapons were pretty damn well balanced and it was just a fun game to play earn kill streaks and have a good time. Another thing that I think Treyarch did really well on this game that a lot of people don't realize, if you go back and look at most of the maps in this game, they are very small. This was the first Call of Duty game to ever really just go with, you know what, we're gonna make small maps and make it a super fast paced game and it worked. People absolutely loved it. The only thing, thinking back, that I can really complain about is LMGs with Target Finder were pretty annoying. But really, that's pretty much it, and a pretty small detail. Really, Black Ops 2 knocked it out of the park. Now, the second reason why it's not number one on this list is simple. It's not Modern Warfare 2. So obviously, the number one game on my list is Modern Warfare 2. And based off of everything I've said to you so far, Modern Warfare 2 should not be the number one game. It has stupidly overpowered weapons, broken glitches, one-man army noob tubes, things that are stupidly overpowered, yet it is still my favorite Call of Duty game. And all it simply comes down to is that fun factor. This game is so fun, whether you're amazing at the game or terrible. There is always something you can be grinding for, going for those kill streaks, trying to get nukes. It is just an incredibly 
fun Call of Duty game, and to this date, there just hasn't been a game that beats it for me. I know technically it shouldn't even be in the top five games based off of how many broken things there are in this game, especially if looking at One Man Army noob tubes. But for some reason, that nuke kill streak, how powerful the kill streaks are, just keep me coming back to this game. And if there's one Call of Duty game that they could remaster again, rebuild from the ground up, and just make the exact same thing, I would love for that to be Modern Warfare 2. I can't say enough how much I love this game, how much fun I had playing this game, how much fun I had going for nukes. There's just no other Call of Duty game that competes. And like I said, I know there's problems with it, but for me, it is still the number one Call of Duty. But ladies and gentlemen, that is that. That is me ranking every single Call of Duty game from Call of Duty 4 to Black Ops 4 worst to best hopefully you enjoyed the list if you did i would love it if you could hit that like button because i know this video is going to get dislikes because people are going to disagree with me and if you do disagree with me feel free to let me know what your rankings are down in the comments below i'm super curious to hear what you guys have to say especially curious to hear what your favorite call of duty of all time is but as always if you like what you see here and want to stay up to date on all my videos make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you turn notifications on i hope you guys enjoyed the video and until next time guys peace out we are, we are reaching for the stars, but we